Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. You're watching Full Take. I had created 10 days back a new Oxonas 12C010 community post saying I will upload the full review video of the latest Oxonas C10 update for the OnePlus Nord 2. But because of my primary job work, I did not got time to review that update earlier even though I updated my device to C10. Meanwhile, most of you already updated to C10 or some were still waiting for the review of this update. Until now, lots of YouTubers already uploaded review videos for this new OTA, but no one really presented full review and the real truth of this new OTA. As already on the C09 review video for that update is given in iCard. Later, I got small 130MB of update saying the change log of security and system stability and it's almost similar to the C09. But if you are upgrading from the Oxonus 11, you will get the full 4.4 GB of OTA. You can also use the Oxonus updater application to install the update. So today in this video, we will see full review of new OTA after 10 days of uses, its performance, CPU throttling issue, battery performance and finally I discuss some major issues which no one trying to tell you about this update like 5G networks and the downgrade issues. To check that, watch the video till the end. Now without further ado, let's get started. On a new adventure. On a new adventure. I already downloaded and flashed this new update of my OnePlus Nord 2. Now if you check the about phone after the update, you will see we are now on the latest Oxygen S12 C10. If you check the Android version, this is the Android 12 and it has same security patch of September 2022 like Oxonus C09. The only change you will find in this update is the build number, it's now Oxonus 12 C10. So basically this update is for the bug fixing and stability improvement over the old Oxonus 12 C09. Now let's start with the performance of new OTA. Overall I failed the smoothness and the performance are almost similar like the C09. Apps opening, animation, touch, all the things are really buttery smooth. Still, I did the Geekbench test to compare the numerical improvement in the both the updates. Here for the CPU performance without the high performance mode, I got the score of 757 for the single core and 2710 for the multi-core. Last time we got these results as 807 and 2706 respectively. So no major difference we can find here in the both the C09 and C10. But after enabling the performance mode, when I checked the performance, I got the score of A50 for the single core and 3062 for the multi core. Last time these results were 845 and 3228. Here the major drop found in the multi core performance in the new C10. But the performance mode should be only used while using the heavy tasks like the games, etc. So it's not a big deal. When I checked the CPU temperature after running these both the tests, here is the slight rise in the temperature up to the 45 degrees Celsius. For this GPU performance on the OpenGL drivers, I got the score of 5158. Here again you can find the massive drop in the performance as compared to the C09. There we got the score of 5662. Even on the Hulkan graphics API, this time I got the bad results of 5027, while on the old C09 I got the score of 5725. So definitely in the GP performance and for the performance mode setting, this new OTA got the massive drop as compared to the old C09. But in the real life day to day tasks, you can't feel these issues, you may only feel the effect of these values while doing the heavy gaming or the task. I also check the CPU temperature to confirm if these results are because of the heavy temperature rise, but temperature are still between the 45 to 50 degrees Celsius in the whole the performance test. Now let's check out the CPU throttling issue that we got in the old update C09. In the older video, we already seen we got 64% of CPU maximum throttling, which was the lowest result we got till the date on any OT update for the OnePlus Nord 2. So I ran the CPU throttling on the 20 threads and with the CPU temperature monitoring enabled, I ran the test for the 5 minutes but immediately after the 2 minutes CPU throttling was started and you can see the red graph everywhere. After stopping the test at 6 minutes, I got 62% of CPU throttling which is almost same as the old C09 build. I didn't show on the CPU temperature correctly so I used another Android application. Here temperature ranging between 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. I can't guarantee the temperature shown by the applications are correct because while CPU throttle test temperature may rise up to 90 and above. 
but final conclusion is like the old build this build is also has same issue of throttling in the real life for the normal users we didn't feel cpu throttling side effects on the performance a lot so the next question arises how is the battery performance i was not able to take the battery performance cycles output from the last few days because i was busy in my another job so i just able to maintain track of one battery cycle 93 to 7% and i can guarantee all the cycles will have almost negligible difference as compared to this one here you can see i got total screen of time of 10 hours and 19 minutes and SOT of 3 hours and 48 minutes total users i got here is only 14 hours deep sleep state battery drain was 5% per hour means if you keep the phone idle for the 10 hours and didn't use your phone after 10 hours, when you check your phone, its battery will be drained up to 50% from the 100%. These are highly disappointed results I got on this new build. Actually, I used this device after adding my primary SIM. Maximum applications I used are YouTube, chatting applications like Telegram, WhatsApp, phone calling, browsing, etc. I kept Wi-Fi and the GPS location on whole the day, Wi-Fi hotspot user as per need. Bluetooth didn't use it at all, always on display kept top whole the time. So these results are really not good as compared to the old C09. It's almost 7 day I installed this OTA so it should give at least whole day battery life with the 5 to 6 hours of SUT that I got on the old builds. Now it's time to tell you the biggest disappointment in the form of the bugs and the issue that I face in this OTA. First one is once you upgraded to the C10 then there is no way to downgrade because you will not get any local install option in the about device 3 dot menu. Like the C09, you can't flash the downgrade package here. You can't even use the local upgrade application that I have given in the video description to sideload the OT or the downgrade packages. If you try to boot in a stock recovery to manually flash the downgrade packages, you will not get any install option in a recovery. There is no fastboot mode working, so you can't use any partition backup to restore your fastboot. And if something goes wrong like the boot loot, soft brick or the hard brick mode, you can't able to use the MTK client that is the only last hope for the modders to recover your device. MTK client detecting the device but showing the handshake error. Few days back I got the message from one subscriber who had messaged his device by flashing the C10 OTA via TWRP and OnePlus service center denied to solve the issue and asking for the motherboard replacement at the cost of 21k. What a joke is going on, I think OnePlus intentionally blocked the fastboot mode and the BROM mode so no one can do the modding and can't able to recover their devices so they can run their service centers. Another issue that most of the users found recently the carrier like the Airtel launched the 5G service and our device is 5G capable. But when I went into the network setting here you can see it showing the network setting only 4G, 3G and 2G. Now download the Airtel application from the Play Store and check the 5G compatibility of the device. Here it's showing the device hardware is 5G capable but software is not ready. Even OnePlus accepted this issue in their community post. Even the advanced engineering mode is not working on the OnePlus Nord 2 on the Oxygen S12. Then why OnePlus is releasing the updates on updates without fixing the issues. So what is my final verdict? This new OTA is totally waste. If you are on the C09 or the Oxygen S11, stay on the Oxygen S11. Don't try to use the Oxygen S12. OnePlus already messed with OnePlus Nord 2 with the new Oxygen S12 and they are not trying to improve the device. They are actually downgrading the user experience on the latest updates. That's it for today guys. If you think I help you then please do like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon for the notification of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.